I didn't join tech because of passion for programming, and I can fairly confidently say that I'm not in the minority. This was my first job as a software engineer, which was an internship at Amazon. Pretty good. It was stressful to get it, but I went through it. Later, as I wanted to move to NYC, I got an entry-level software engineer offer from Clear Street for after graduating, which is a fintech startup. And fast forwarding to today, now I'm a mid-level software engineer at JustWorks. With that experience in mind, there are some things that I wish I knew before ever starting to work or even study to become a software engineer, which would have saved me so much time and effort. The first one is that you don't really need a computer science degree to become a software engineer. It's something that you've probably also heard, but I never really understood this until working as one. You definitely learn useful things, but the degree is mostly for providing foundational knowledge in theory. It's not about preparing you or teaching you how to become a good software engineer. If you're not already enrolled in college, there are other alternatives like being self-taught or boot camps or enrolling in an online master's program, which you can complete much faster so long that you have a degree in anything. But there are very few courses that you should consider going through over a couple of weekends regardless of the path you choose. If you have never programmed, then taking an introductory course to programming like CS50 from Harvard that's completely free will take you from not knowing anything to having a basic programmer's intuition. I would also recommend taking the introductory course to data structures and algorithms which will teach you the basic building blocks that any programming languages use to build anything with code. And finally, an introduction to operating systems, which will help you learn how programs actually work under all the abstractions of the frameworks and tools that you're going to pick up along the way. And this will help you cultivate technical expertise and to become an actual software engineer and not just someone who learned the syntax of JavaScript and some front-end library like React. Learning operating systems will teach you the first principles of how any program works. And that will always serve you as a mental framework for when you get stuck or you don't understand something. In terms of choosing a bootcamp over the self-teaching pass or, or the online master's program, there is no one-size-fits solution. It depends on you and what you want to do. There's absolutely nothing that you cannot learn for free on your own, but that's not the best path for everyone. But it also depends on the path that you want to take as a software engineer, which segues into specializations and tech stack. As a software engineer, you might do a bunch of everything or get into one of the specializations right from the beginning. It all depends on the team that you're on, which you have control over later on when you're not applying to an entry-level software engineer position or if you're applying to a specific position right from the get-go. These will determine the tech stack that you will be onboarding into. When starting out at Amazon, I ended up on a data team, so I slowly expanded my skill set on that area working on data-related projects, and I continued doing that work in the later companies that I joined. While these are not hard silos, going from data engineering to front-end or vice versa is going to be a more difficult shift to pull because there is minimal alignment compared to switching from data engineering to backend, for example. At the same time, some of my colleagues that ended up on a front-end or an infra teams grew in these areas, while others ended up transitioning into something else once they figure out what they prefer. So it's not like that whatever you're going to end up doing in your first job or on your first team is going to force you to continue doing that. That's good to know. While there is art and mastery in each vertical, if you know what you want to do from a previous course that you took or work that you've done, then focus on that. As you gain experience and once you identify the path that you want to take as a software engineer, make sure to focus on that and continuously build your skill set. Read books, articles, and position yourself at work to take on relevant projects so that you'll be able to immerse yourself on that path and really build valuable knowledge and experience that will be crucial for you to get into more senior roles and bring even more impact to whatever company that you will be working at. One way to do this really well is to identify who is really good at that path. There is always someone who is great at front-end or who everyone goes to when they have a data-related question that they were not able to figure out on their own. And once you've identified them, try to work with them. You will likely be on different teams, but you can occasionally pick their mind over something that 
project you're working on or ask for their feedback. They won't get annoyed. On the contrary, when they see your drive to grow and that you respect their expertise by taking their advice, researching and applying it in your work and then sharing it with them and thanking them, they will be compelled to continue connecting with you and mentoring you. It's okay in the first year or two to do a bunch of everything, but to eventually become invaluable, you would have to focus on a specific path, continuously educate yourself on it, and take example from others who are great at it. Check and check. If football clubs were like tech companies, when they would examine a new player, instead of looking at how good the player can play during a game or during practice, they would analyze how fast they can run with the ball. Now sure, that's probably somewhat important, but running with the ball and playing football are still different things. And when you interview for a software engineer position, this is roughly what happens. And to be great at interviewing so that you could pass big techs and other companies competitive companies' interviews, you would have to be able to solve lead code mediums confidently, which is something that you will never, ever need to do at the job. That makes no sense at all. One thing I always thought was that there is a point in time which you should start doing it, but not too early because you have other commitments, classes, but the truth is that it's never too early. It took me well over a year of daily practice to get to that level, every single day. Now sure, some are going to be better and faster, but most of us are going to be somewhere within the average. So don't count on two months of practice to get you to the top 2% of paying companies. 10x the practice and you will get the results that you want. But it doesn't stop there. For your first job, you're not going to get to a point where you're getting a good amount of responses back from your online applications. Lead code is not enough. You should approach software engineers on LinkedIn daily and I truly wish that I knew this in my freshman year. If you think that this doesn't work, then ask yourself how much of it did you do? If you did it 50 times, then there's your answer. Try 50 per day for three months and you'll be surprised of how much some of the people that you've reached out to will be kind enough to help you. Start with alumni of your college or bootcamp and don't just ask for a referral. Ask for a 20 minute chat over the phone to learn about their work and get to know them. People love talking about themselves. Make sure to be authentic and to actually be interested in whatever they have to say. And you have a good reason to do so because you might end up learning a lot. Later on, they might even offer themselves how they can help you. And at some point, you want to ask them if they could run your resume through one of the recruiters for a position that you're interested in. A quick slack from their end and you have a real chance of getting to the first stage of the interviews compared to going through the online applications route with other thousands of applicants for that same position. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.